Hi, I'm Sebin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled The Effect of Gate Turn-On Resistor on Electromagnetic Emission. And this is an intuitive explanation. I'd like to thank Evgeny for his review of this uh, presentation. So in this presentation, I'm going to cover a little bit about the spectrum of pulses, the high frequency components, talk about the VDT, the IDT, and their effect on the electromagnetic emission, the VDT in half bridge, which is the most generic circuit in switch mode converters, and the dependence on RG, the same thing for the IDT, and all these will be accompanied by simulation. So here I'm showing some pulses. The top is one microsecond in all of these, but the slopes are different, the rise time. Here we have a rise time of one microsecond, this is 100 nanosecond, and this is 30 nanosecond, okay? So now let's have a look at the spectrum. And here it is. These are the three cases. And as you can see, there is quite a bit of a difference at high frequency as it would be expected. The green is the 30 nanosecond rise time. The red is the one microsecond. And you can see that in this range of a uh, few, uh, say 80 or something like that megahertz, the difference is a lot, like 30 dB, that's, that's a lot. And at low frequency, they are about the same, but there is a pronounced difference at high frequency, meaning the faster they change, the more you have components of high frequency. I'm not going into the analysis, just to show the phenomenon. Now, what is the effect of this rise time? And it could be a voltage or a current. So let's consider the case of a voltage. Suppose I have some DVDT. Here is a line on which I have some pulses. Let's say it's a phase lag with the line going to the output terminal. And you have, of course, this uh, pulses from zero to practically a power supply or battery. And then I have here a line, which is a sensitive line, could be an input to an amplifier, it could be part uh, input to a gate driver of a PWM converter. And I'm showing here a parasitic capacitance between the two. Always between any two lines, two conductors, you'll have a capacitance, parasitic capacitance. Of course, it depends on the distance, on the length, on the area. But let's just say that in some case, we have something like 0.1 picofarad, okay? Now let's assume that the change of the voltage, the rate, is 10 volt per nanosecond, which is not that much, we'll see it later. What happens is that we are going to have a current, according to this relationship, that capacitance times dV dt, well, it's approximately, because I'm just assuming that all these pulses are on this capacitor, well, there is some, of course, voltage here. So, under this assumption, I'm getting that the current, the peaks are one milliamp. Okay, these are these peaks here. And obviously, if this is 1K, you'll get a peak of a voltage, one volt. That's a lot, okay? So you can see that DVDT is really harmful in, the, in terms of electric field. And by this uh, parasitic capacitance, it's being injected into, into all nearby and far away, in fact, lines and area and, and planes. So this is the DVDT. Now we have a similar, well, not an identical uh, case of the IDT. Now if I have a current, there is a DIDT, there is a magnetic field around it, which is generating a magnetic flux density. And then if I have here a loop here, I'm showing here a DC-DC converter like a buck, but it could be any loop here, an input to an amplifier or something of this nature and some of this flux is getting into this area, then flux is B, well, this is the average flux density, okay, times the area, then we're going to generate an electromagnetic force, here it is, in this loop here, and the magnitude is uh, equal to dV dt, which is this relationship, okay? So now let's take an example. Suppose, uh, well, this is the permeability of vacuum or air, and here I have the distance, I'm assuming, uh, five centimeter, quite a bit, and that uh, the area 
is one centimeter square. Well, it's a little bit maybe large uh, in, in actual design, but just for the sake of demonstration. And I'm getting here 25 volt peaks. Well, that's a lot. That's a lot of EMI. Now, obviously I have a capacitor, but remember that there is a parasitic inductance to this capacitor. So at high frequency that we are talking about, this capacitor, or even a 0.1, will not be this, that effective. So these coupling of the VDT and the IDT are really very harmful and they are the major cause of EMI in a system. So let's do some simulation to understand uh, what are the magnitude to be expected. So I'm showing here half a bridge, which is a generic, of course, uh, case for many converters like uh, synchronous uh, back, uh, inverters, converters, rectifiers, whatever. And I'm here shorting the gate to the source because I'm not interested in the switching of this transistor, but mainly the effect of the body diode, okay, the body diode. I'm showing here a source which represents an inductor or a motor or some other load, inductive load. And at the beginning, we have a current going here into this diode. Now, this transistor is turned on, and as it is turned on, then the current of the diode is dying down, it's re being reduced and the current here is being increased until the point that the current in the diode is zero. Well, we'll see there is a problem of uh, reverse recovery. We'll deal with it a little bit later, but let's just assume that eventually this current goes to zero. And then this transistor is actually pulling this uh, point down. And in this case, this stage is really, or this transistor is really in the linear mode. So. Here I'm showing it what really happens with, as far as the signals go. This is the gate signal. We have here the plateau. This is where we are entering the linear mode. And here, of course, you see when this uh, midpoint is going down. This is the voltage across the transistor. Okay, and this is the DVDT I'm talking about. So I'm assuming that the diode current is zero. We have current here, we are in the linear mode, and here is really what is really happening. During the linear mode, then as we have a voltage coming in, we have the plateau here, there is a voltage difference, this is the voltage difference on this gate resistor, there is a current, this is the current, and this current goes this way, through the gate to drain capacitance. It doesn't go here, because during the plateau the voltage is about constant, so there is a very little current here. So most of the current is going here. Now as it goes here, of obviously it's being absorbed by the transistor, then we have a change in the voltage according to this relationship. That is, that the VDT of this capacitance is Ig, the current, divided by the capacitance. This is coming from this b very basic relationship. The current is the capacitance times dV dt, so dV dt is this thing. So the voltage here is changing because there is a current being pumped in. And here, contra to intuitive understanding, the voltage drop here is not due to the transistor, but in fact due to the capacitor. That is the fact that there is a current through the capacitor, there is a change in the voltage of this capacitor. This is why this voltage drops. Now, it is clear now that the higher the gate current, the faster will be this drop. Now, the gate current depends on the voltage drop and the resistance. So we see a very direct relationship between the dividity of this critical point here and the gate resistance. So here I'm showing three cases, three resistances, one ohm to 10 ohms. This is the drop and this is the gate voltages. And let's have a look, zoom in and see this is the one ohm 
You see this drop here. Well, there is some nonlinearity here. I'm not going into it. Let's just talk about this part here. And in this part here, we have a drop of 36 volt and 2 nanosecond. So it is 18 volt per nanosecond rate. If I have a 10 ohm, again, I'll just look at this straight line here. Let's forget about this. It's due to the fact that the gate itself is changing. Well, let's not go into it. It's not a major issue for this discussion. So we're looking at the fastest rate here, and it is 1.8. And this is for 10 ohm, 1.8 volt per nanosecond. Le earlier, we got 18. So you see that uh, even in this very simple simulation, we see a factor of 10 in DVDT as we change the resistor. Now, let me go into this diode reverse recovery issue. When I have a current through a diode, and then if this transistor is starting to conduct, as I've said, the current of the diode will be dropping. And here I'm showing a drop of the current. But once it goes to zero, it doesn't stop. In fact, it will go negative. That is, there will be current in the other direction. The reason is that as long as there are charge carriers within the junction of a diode, it will conduct. It will conduct both ways. So it will take a while, and then these charge carriers will be swept out of the junction. Only then the current goes to zero. As it turns out, this process depends on the IDT. If the IDT is very fast, the change of the current, then you'll go to a very large reverse current, a peak. This is the peak of reverse current. If the IDT is moderate, we'll go to a lower one. And the reason is, of course, that if the change is slow, there is more time for the charge carriers to be removed, okay? And here, they are still stuck in, and the current can actually go to very high Value. And here I'm showing a simulation. Let me just say that SPICE, which is the core algorithm of LT SPICE, which I'm using here, is not very good to simulate the reverse recovery. Really not very good. However, we can just get an impression of what is really ha happening, just the tendency. And what we see here is that with a 1 ohm resistor, we go to a certain negative current, P current reverse current in the reverse recovery. 5 ohm is lower than that, and 10 ohm will be the lowest. Now the numbers here are very large. I don't think that they are correct. As I have said, SPICE is not very good in this respect. Also, this is oscillation due to the fact that there is a inductance in the, in the circuit, which I have introduced to be more realistic, and there are some capacitances output capacitance of the transistors, so there is a resonant network, so this should actually be a sinusoidal, but again, SPICE is not very good at it, and this is what we get, and so let's just get it as a sort of reference to what is really happening. So we see, first of all, that the reverse recovery peak is really dependent on the gate resistance. Now what about the slope? So I'm looking here at the slope for the 1 ohm, for this first slope here, and what I'm seeing is that I'm, it's about 40 amp per nanosecond. Now for the 10 ohm resistance, gate resistance, we are getting 10 amp per nanosecond. So this is 10 and this was 40. Well, it's not a factor of 10, but it's much lower because of the larger resistance. Let me just say that I'm talking about the hard switching case here, which is the worst case in PWM. There are, of course, other transitions which are less severe, but I'm looking at a critical switching instant. And so, as I've already shown earlier, which is just repeating the slide, with a 10 m per nanosecond, which is this case, which is the less severe case, we have 25 volt injection in this particular setup. And as you can see, this is very significant and showing again that the IDT is really very harmful, as is the DVDT. So what is the conclusion here? We've seen that the resistance of the gate turn on resistor 
has a major impact on both the IDT and the VDT, which are the primary EMI source in switch mode converters. Now, the lower the resistance, the higher is the EMI emission. Now, large gate turn on, which of course will reduce the VDT and the IDT, will increase the switching losses. I'm not discussing uh, this subject here, which is outside the scope of this presentation. This brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.